Hi everyone, welcome back to another quick video. Uh, this time I'm going to be talking about um, specific forms in relation to the installation certificate. And um, this is something that uh, I've found um, a lot of people have struggled with. And there seems to be a lot of people out there that are wasting potentially lots of time um, filling in records, taking ownership of jobs that they really shouldn't be doing. And what I've got open here is a generic schedule of test results, as you can see. And uh, we're required by BS7671 that if we do a board change, we're actually supposed to fill out one of these documents. Okay, so it's a certificate, an electrical installation certificate. Uh, now, prior to that, we're supposed to conduct a condition report to ascertain whether the um, the job is actually fit for changing a board and, and if there's any problems. But quite often we're under pressure because the customer doesn't want to pay for such a service. You know, going around doing an £80 check, what does it really tell you? Not a lot. You're lucky if you get a ZS done. Um, you know, it's not telling you right a lot about the job, and there seems to be a lot of people going around doing condition reports for eighty pound. Compare, you know, competing with plumbers and other trades, and goodness knows whatever else. Well, you know, if if, if that's what you want to do and you want to continue along that route, then that's up to you. But realistically, you're testing nothing. Um, this is a document that is supposed to be filled out when you do an an installation, such as a board change, something like that, or a new circuit. And yeah, it's time consuming, but let me just tell you guys that uh, if you if you don't fill this out, and again, don't fill it out accurately, you can be leaving yourself um, into a lot of bother really. So if we just scroll up to the top and uh, have a look here, it does actually say electrical installation certificate. So if we were doing a board change, okay, when we get down to this bit here, um, what is quite evident that a lot of people are doing is filling all the circuit details out, testing the original installation, putting all the readings and results in here, handing it over to the customer and saying, there you go, that's a lovely job. Yeah, great. Um, but what you might not understand is that you've now taken ownership of that job as though it's a brand new installation, theoretically. Um, if something was to go wrong with it and you've tested it as part of a board change, then unfortunately uh, you are now liable for that installation. Um, what I tend to, to do, guys, is put the information in that's relevant to the work that I have done. Yes, I will list the circuits. Yes, I will list the protected devices, uh, any information that I've got. But right back up here, and I'll just take you to the specific page. Um, it says extent of installation covered by the certificate. Uh, I generally put board change, yeah, identification of circuits where possible, all existing circuits not completely tested, recommend a full uh, electrical installation condition report be undertaken as soon as possible. And that way you're not taking full ownership of the job, okay? So if this was to go to a court of law, the judge is going to say, well, you've tested it on an installation certificate. Uh, so therefore, what you're inadvertently doing is you're taking ownership of it uh, as though it's a brand new job, and that's certainly not the case. And there seems to be a lot of confusion out there about this. So obviously these are my opinions, guys. Um, you know, it's up to you what you do in the real world. But I ain't taking ownership of something that I haven't done. Okay, I will tick the boxes I need to tick to get from A to B. But I certainly won't be doing a lot of extra work uh, unless I'm getting paid for it, you know. And like I said, you do a board change. You're not required to actually test the full board. At that point, what you need to do is prior to starting the job, you should have already done a condition report um, because that then will cover you for any alterations that you make further down the line because it should highlight any defects within the installation so that you know that it's fit for continued service. That's pretty much all I've got today, guys. What I'd like to say is thanks for, for, for the follows, thanks for the likes. If you can subscribe to the channel, please do so. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, it is much appreciated and it tells me that uh, you want more of this kind of content and uh, moving forward I'll be uh, doing plenty more videos so I will see you again soon on the next one.